Hello traders, welcome back to FFX Academy. This is Patrick Kenny and today what I'm going to do is give you a full breakdown of a beginner's guide to show you exactly what you need to be doing in the markets to better determine your technical analysis. Guys, it's great to have you back. Before we do anything, this is going to be a fantastic video. Now, if, if I could ask one thing of you, it'd be to click that subscribe button. It would mean a lot and you can watch all my future and past videos, of course. In today's video, what I want to do is discuss with you a simple tip and trick that I use to do better technical analysis. And this can be used for both beginners and advanced traders, but best of all, this is really good for beginners to grasp. In today's video, what we're going to talk about is support and resistance. And we're going to talk about what that is, as well as the easiest possible way for you to identify support and resistance and to better get you going as a beginner in the market. So as you can see here, what we're going to talk about today is the two different things, support and resistance. Now, the difference between the two is very simple. When a market hits a level and turns around at a peak, as you can see here in red, similar to you say jumping and hitting your head off of a roof, that is resistance. That is where the market has resisted. And simply put guys, what that means is that there were some buyers in this market going up, up, up. But once that market hit this peak, more sellers came in which pushed the market down. Okay, And on the flip side of things, the only difference for support is that the market hits a level at a bottom and then flips back up, which means, of course, that buyers have taken control. To put this simply, guys, you got to understand that the market is, is moving for one reason, and that is when people are buying or selling currency. And when there's people buying and selling currency against one or the other, typically when the market is moving in one direction, say up, there's more buyers than there are sellers. And when the market is moving down, such as you see here, there are more sellers than buyers. And then of course, if the market is going sideways, there's about an even amount of both. And that, to understand that alone is a big deal because that's gonna help you know the psychological pattern and factor of understanding where the market is going. At the end of the day, the market is all a bias. And the only reason that the market moves is because of us as traders, a community of traders, retail and professional, moving the market because we have a bias and we're essentially giving it our best guess of where the market can go. So now that you know what resistance and support is, what I want to talk about is color coding each of these levels. And what we're going to talk about today is color coding our major support and resistance, aka identifying on our daily time frame in red and our minor support and resistance in orange, or sometimes we use yellow to be able to see it better. But today what we're going to talk about is how to do this and how to best understand using three different tools. Two of them are right here, our horizontal lines, which are orange and red, and one of them is a zigzag indicator. So I'm going to bring all of three in today. And give me just one second, I'm going to switch over to a slideshow to show you exactly what we need to use. So we need to use three different tools today to best use technical analysis. And for beginners, you guys are going to be mind blown at the simplicity of this method. These three tools are the zigzag tool, the red horizontal line, and the orange horizontal line. Now, understand that that orange can be switched out, and these are color-coded based off of my liking. So if you copy me to a T, you're going to get the same results as me. If you don't copy me to a T, it's going to look a little bit different, and I don't want you to get yourself confused. So use the red or orange horizontal tool to make sure that you're doing things correctly. Now, these three tools are going to be needed in MetaTrader 4. We're going to go over there in a second, but let's go over the settings real quick. All I want you guys to do is write down these levels. I don't want you to do anything else. I just want you to write down these levels on a notebook right now. So pause this video, go get a notebook, and come back because these are very important for your settings. So the zigzag indicator is going to have different settings when you open it. And you'll see that in just a second in MetaTrader 4. But those settings can be changed and those are the depth setting, the deviation, and the back step. Let's keep it simple, right? We're trying to keep this simple. It's a beginner's guide. In essence, these numbers change the sensitivity of our zigzag tool that we'll be using. The more sensitive it is, the less accurate it will be. The less sensitive it is, the more accurate and the more dominant support and resistance lines we will be able to find. And so, of course, I make these settings a little bit more conservative to allow for a better support and resistance zone. Secondly, we want to color these thick and white for those of us that use a black background so that we can see the zigzag 
very easily. Second tool that we need to use is the red line. We use this for our daily analysis. Once again, I'm about to hit us up on the MetaTrader 4 chart so you're able to see what I'm talking about. But this is exactly what we need to use. The red line top-down analysis on the daily and then bottom-up analysis on the daily utilizing the red line. Finally, we'll also be using the orange line. Once again, the orange line is to be used for this system. Top-down on the 4-hour, bottom-up on the 4-hour for the orange line. All together, this is our process. We need to set up the indicator, the zigzag. We need to add the red lines for their daily. We need to add the orange lines for the four hour, and then we need to forecast the market. I'm gonna show you how to do all of this in just a second. With that being said, guys, let's get on the charts and let's talk about it. All right, guys, we're back on the charts now. Now, the first thing we wanna do, we talked about it, the first analyzation side of the market is the daily time frame, And of course, we're gonna to need to use that. First thing I want you guys to do is make sure that if you're gonna be utilizing the thick and white color of the zigzag indicator, that you are having a black background on your chart. So I got rid of my grid by going to this right clicking and clicking off the grid, so I don't have a grid either. And then make sure you go to your properties and try to copy down what I have right here. Black, white, light slate gray, lime red, lime red, lime, lime green, red, red. Try to copy these settings down, you'll get the exact same feel other than the EMAs, which the EMAs are not required for today's video. Uh, but this will give you a good feel of it, okay? Now, as we talk about this, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to the daily time frame. As you can see, D1 clicked here, and then you're gonna wanna click the magnifying glass till it grays out. When it grays out, what that will allow you to do is get it in a situation where you're all the way zoomed out and the market should look like this. You should see way back on the market. Then what I want you to do is make sure that your green button up here, the scroll chart arrow for the tick is not clicked and the red one is clicked. You'll see real quick, see when I have the red one not clicked and the green one clicked, I don't have much room to see where it could go. I wanna be able to forecast the market. So I like having this big gap right here. Little tips and tricks that I want you guys to know. So now what we're gonna do is add the zigzag indicator. So what I do to add the zigzag indicator is I click this navigator button, okay? This navigator button is right here. When I click that, if I scroll down, you're gonna notice where it says zigzag, okay? These are all my indicators. I wanna make sure I'm in the indicator section. And then I find zigzag. I'm gonna double click on that. And then it's gonna bring open my inputs. Okay, these are the changes that we're going to make. These are the changes that you just got and you wrote down in your notebook. So once again, it said depth of 21, it said deviation of 13, and it said back step of 10. That is important to remember, okay? Once you have clicked that, go to your colors and change your color, like I said, to white and change your width to a three, okay? Now click OK. What you'll notice is maybe at the beginning when we zoomed out our chart, you might have not known where or what to do on the chart. The zigzag indicator outlines the market for the good levels of support and resistance to help you out to find those areas in the market that you wanna be in. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to label our support and resistance. Red being more important, orange being less important. Of course, we mark our red on our daily and orange on our four hour. So here's what we wanna do. We wanna to go to the daily and then we're gonna click our horizontal tool and what we do is we first find the highest point of the chart, the very highest point of the chart. For me, it's right here. I'm gonna then click with my horizontal tool. I'm gonna to make sure that my color is red, so all I have to do is double click and then right click and change it to red. All right, and then now I have started. So what I'm now gonna do is go and find all the tops from the, this point to the left and then from this point to the right. So you'll see me do that now. All right guys, now that I'm done from the top down, now I do the same thing. I find the most bottom point in the chart. And for this one, I just work left and then right again. Same rule set. So I just click and go. So now you watch me do that. Hey guys. Very simply put, you can see how I like to do this. And so 
What this allows me to do is find support and resistance in the market for more extreme levels, higher time frames. All right. Now, when I'm labeling these, what I'm trying to do is make sure that if I already have a level, say I already had a level of resistance here, but it turns support there, I make sure I only have one line. So never try to overlap levels if you don't have to. Okay. And then the next step is doing the same exact thing on the four hour, making sure we're all the way zoomed out as we are here and doing the same exact thing, but we're changing our color. So what we'll do is we'll click here real quick. We'll double click, we'll right click and we'll change our color. And uh, I'll find this orange color right here. It's called orange red. All right. You'll see a little bit of a different color there and we do the same thing. So we're working our way from our, our high point down, we're not overlapping any points that were not already hit. And uh, yeah, we're just moving there. So you can now see we're pretty much labeled all this. Now we just flip gears and we do the bottom. All right, guys. So now that we're done here, we got a really messy chart. I don't think anybody would argue with that. It looks kind of messy. The next step is deleting the zigzag indicator. So I'm going to right click, go to indicator list and click on it and hit delete. All right. Now we've got some clean level support and resistance. If I go down to the one hour time frame and I zoom in two clicks, one, two. Now what I have is a clean chart with support and resistance that is going to give me an opportunity to figure out where the market is going to go. This is the beginner's guide because what we're doing is we're figuring out how we can actually start to mark our charts. Then from there, we can add on more technical stuff. So what I want you guys to do is now determine and forecast on the chart where you think the market will go. Notice right now, where is price? Well, we're near a level of support, so we can anticipate a rejection, right? But if it rejects and breaks through, then we can anticipate maybe a retest and selling with the trend. So learn how to forecast your market will also help you. So all these things can be found in my one on one mentorship. And I want to make sure that you guys understand how to get that. There is no website. There's nothing fancy for that at this time. What you can do, though, is you can comment down below your email. And if you want one on one mentorship, I will email you. I'll reach out to you to get your phone number. We'll talk on the phone. We'll figure out what will best work for you to expand your trading horizon. With that being said, smash that subscribe button. Click that like button if you like this video and I will see you guys for the next video.